Hey, Josh here. I had a little bit of spare time, so I decided to do a little special. This is a top ten list of the cartoons I wish were cancelled because I hate them. In short, that the ones I want to see go away because I don't like them in one way or another. And so, um, let's get started. Ten. I used to like Teen Titans Go. I used to love Teen Titans Go. As a fan of the original Teen Titans animated action series, I also enjoyed their change of pace when they turned it into a cutesy comedy with, with sometimes random and stupid elements. The problem is, it's pretty much run its course. Teen Titans Go! has become... It, it's run out of jokes. It basically is telling the same joke over and over, and with very little exception, they're not doing anything new. A particular episode uh, one of the most recent things that was actually funny, in my opinion, was a recent episode where uh, the Titans went to rescue the Justice League that had been captured by Darkseid. And it was revealed that Darkseid was voiced brilliantly by Weird Al Yankovic. And that was just a truly hilarious moment in my opinion but everything else they do now is it just doesn't make me laugh anymore they had one particularly awesome moment lately that uh, it wasn't really funny but it, it played off of 80s action tropes well an 80s rock cover really with a song called the night begins to shine and Cyborg was so influenced by this song, the sh episode changed its art direction as he just went into this almost Boris Valiero fantasy, a sci-fi fantasy adventure. It was a rare piece, a mo rare amazing moment for the show, but it doesn't change the fact that it's just rarely entertaining to me anymore, so yeah, it's about time that Teen Titans actually died, I think. Nine. I don't really know how to feel about Blazing Team. It isn't as dumb as it seemed like in, initially in the commercials, and I first thought, are these bunch of kids using ancient mystical battle yo-yos to save the world? And no, it's not as stupid as that, but still using, converting ancient mystic stones into yo-yos in order to be able uh, to allow these kids to be able to access the magic in a way they understand is still kind of dumb. Worse so is, it seems every episode has some sort of moral. And you know that's what we need now in cartoons these days. Those have always worked out. Shoehorn morals are, yeah. I don't know, I just... I think this show is a dud, and besides, it would be so easy to make fun of for a review. Eight. Adventure Time has a very similar problem that Teen Titans Go! had. It ran its course. There's not much further Adventure Time can go, really. It lived off of a lot of shocking moments and a twists and turns in its plot lines, but at this point, it's mostly silly to be silly, and that doesn't work out very well. Sadly. Seven. I almost wanted to like Super Noobs, but from the title and the previews I saw, I knew I wasn't going to. And I, before doing this special, I actually had to double check 
to make sure that Super Noobs wasn't already cancelled. But, uh, it's not. It had so much potential. These kids were mistaken for mighty warriors by an alien race and given super weapons in order to fight a galactic space virus. But, and so, most of the time, the episodes are them trying to use their new superpowers for their own selfish advantage. The virus very, very rarely even comes up. That issue, the virus, everything that it could be, it's not. Uh, it, everything has so much wasted potential and it tries desperately to be relevant and it's just not uh, just not good. I can't I can't work with it. Six. Oh Wabbit. I want Wabbit gone. I absolutely want Wabbit destroyed. It was an obvious attempt for writers to recreate old Bugs Bunny cartoons, where Bugs is just dealing with the villain of the episode in his own Bugs Bunny way. But it fails on so many categories, and I think I know why. First off, it's done by someone who doesn't truly understand the old Looney Tunes cartoons. Now, this normally wouldn't be a problem, but the original press release for Rabbit said that that was exactly what they were trying to imitate, were the old Looney Tune, car Looney Tune cartoons, and in that sense, they failed. Rabbit failed for another reason, and that was the Looney Tune show. Rabbit was the show meant to replace the Looney Tune show, and it's a poor, it's a very poor replacement because. The Looney Tunes show was exemplary. It was absolutely amazing comedy that is that was unappreciated for its time. It tragically is cancelled and should not have been so soon. Five. I wanted to do this next one in rhyme, but I honestly don't care enough about it to put in the effort. The Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that. It is a PBS educational program for kids that makes the mistake that a lot of educational programs for kids do, do. And that's talking down to the audience. Treating kids like they're completely stupid and can't grasp concepts that we do. And that's a problem you get when you have writers who don't know how to talk to children. They're not idiots. They just don't know any better yet. But they can understand concepts just as easily as you can. Couple that with an actual lack of rhyming. There's little bits that do rhyme in the show, but not enough. This is a Dr. Seuss-based program. Dr. Seuss rhymed every line. He even made up words to fit in for rhyming. Yeah, it... So it's not, it's really not all that entertaining. It's educational in the sense of treating the audience like they're morons, and it doesn't even rhyme all that much. So this is kind of really wasted space here, and it's probably better if superior educational programming were to take its place. Four. It's been 25 years since there had been a televised series of Alvin and the Chipmunks. And this latest one, I don't know, 
it really misses its mark. Something just seems off. I don't really have a lot to say about it. This is a really boring one on the list. Anyway, I want it gone. Yes. I just think it's terrible and a waste of a time slot. In this modern age where we're suddenly getting a lot of good cartoons, we really should leave space open for the next new awesome thing. Instead of this floating media driftwood that's just not just not doing it anymore. Three. Pickle and Peanut. Pickle and Peanut reminds me a lot of the old Ren and Stimpy show. Watered down. A lot. It's as if Disney decided to take Ren and Stimpy, sand off the edges to make it a lot more family friendly, throw in internet relevance, and just the mentality of the internet. And that's what you basically get with Pickle and Peanut. But maybe it is entertaining to young people. I used to really love Ren and Stimpy, so this could be really funny to them. But at my age, I think I just look at it and think this is completely stupid and I can't I can't enjoy it. Two. Be cool Scooby Doo is the latest attempt to repackage the Scooby Doo franchise. Which honestly didn't need repackaging. Almost every time it gets repackaged, it's bad. It's a weirdly timeless formula. And, um, this is no exception. Changing things around for we Be Cool Scooby Doo honestly almost feels like an insult. Artistically, and the way the characters and plots and humor is written. It's as if Scooby-Doo was injected with Family Guy. And in this case, it doesn't work. I heard from a press release when they were releasing Be Cool Scooby-Doo that they were attempting to take the characters and flesh out the characters more, make them more, more of a character. But... After all these years, the Scooby-Doo characters were fleshed out deeper characters. And uh, from what I've seen, turning Fred into a all-American jock with control issues, turning Daphne into an oblivious airhead, practically, and the other changes that they've made to the Scooby-Doo cast, their attempt to add personality to these characters instead turned them into two-dimensional stereotypes. I don't know. I might not be giving it a fair chance, but I don't much care for this particular reboot. One. Oh boy. Oh boy. You knew for my number one slot it had to be something bad. And it is. I am honestly uncomfortable with Clarence. I'm sure some people might think that Clarence is a deep show or a funny show or something of fairly good value. The topics they discuss are not are topics that I've seen a lot in other shows, um, and I don't p particularly find it very funny, and the main character, if he was funny, I would feel uncomfortable laughing at him, because there is something very clearly wrong with Clarence, mentally. He, is, he seems to definitely be a mentally handicapped young boy, and 
I don't want to laugh at a mentally handicapped boy. I don't want to be in the situation where I find this poor kid's affliction funny. And, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's why I put Clarence at my number one slot. I want Clarence gone because it is the only show that I found lately that actually makes me feel guilty for trying to enjoy it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I intend to do another one of these at one point when I have another break in my schedule and I have time to work on one of these or one of my other projects and um, hopefully it won't be as uh, overall depressing or inciting as this one. It's fine if you like these shows Fine to have your own opinion. This was just mine. And uh, thank you for watching. I do have another top 10 planned pretty soon. And that would actually be a little bit more uplifting. Uh, 10 cartoons I actually want to see canceled because I love them so much. And I can't wait to review them. Well, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that'll be next time, and, uh, I apologize for my, um, stammering, and, uh, anyway, see ya.